Hi, I'm Pastor Jim Park, and welcome to There's a New Day Coming television program, which is being produced by the Hope Channel Philippines. This is a program which focuses on urban ministry around the world and is based on an upcoming textbook on mission to the cities that I'm currently writing and editing. Each of the programs will feature the personal testimonies of people who have been involved in urban ministry from different places. You can get a lot of additional information about the program on our Facebook page, which is entitled, There's a New Day Coming. Our guest today is Ben Casimero, who is the president of Central Luzon Conference, which has the oversight of the greater metro Manila region, where over 21 million people live. Manila is the most densely populated city in the world, with over 42,000 people per square kilometer and 110,000 square people per square meter. So we'd like to welcome you, Pastor Casimiro, to our program today. Thank you for the privilege of uh, sharing what we're doing in uh, Manila. Very excellent. Now tell us a little bit, Ben. I know we've been friends for many years. I came to ICE in 2003. At that time, you were conference uh, personal ministry Sabbath School director. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about your early upbringing and how you came into the ministry. Well, uh, before I became uh, a minister, uh, I graduated uh, Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering. Oh, really? Yeah, then God called me. Then I went to the seminary, then had my Master of Ministry, uh, then Master of uh, Administration, and uh, at present, I have an ongoing uh, program in uh, uh, Doctor of Ministry. Excellent. So you started out as a civil engineer. Yes. And so now you're into like spiritual engineering yeah. in the city. Yeah. So has that background of civil engineering helped you any in understanding the city and the dynamics of what's yeah. going on? Yeah, knowing my background before was to build a building, but now I'm building uh, the kingdom of the Lord. Building, building yeah. people. Yeah, and uh, as we make uh, some, uh, uh, what do you call that, plans, uh, that helps me. Because uh, when I look at our, uh, how to manage and run the conference, yeah. uh, I look at uh, different angles as well. Ah. Uh, you know, in uh, making a building, you right. have to look at the front view, the rear view, ah. the, the top view. Very and nice. It helps me. Yeah, Excellent. I can, I can use that. Uh, when we talk about different problems, then I try to look on different angles. Excellent. Uh -huh. yeah, I always find that our past training, whatever it is, God will bring that into our current ministry. Yeah. Excellent. So what positions have you held in the church? Well, I have been a Sabbath school uh, director, personal ministries director, mm. for uh, two terms in Central Luzon. Mm. Then after that, uh, I've been a Sabbath school director also in, um, in North Philippine Union Conference. Mm. Then I've been also a executive secretary before, and now the president of Central Luzon. Excellent. Now you started out work as, as a pastor? Yes, of course, as a pastor. Then I became a senior pastor, mm. then area chairman in our uh, conference. So did you, has, has your work basically been in Manila your entire ministry? Uh, most of my assignment, but I also experienced going to Bulacan. Which and, is just north of yeah, Manila. Yeah. But you've, you've, you've been pretty close to the metro Manila area. Yeah, that's area. the closest uh, province of, uh, near uh, Manila. So how, how many years have you uh, been in the city here in Manila? In Manila? Pastoring or, or in ad, administrative work? Well, I've been in the ministry in the last 28 years. Um, I've been out of Manila for only two years. Yeah, well, you're like me. I spent 25 years in Los Angeles. Uh, my wife so and I... So most of my time... I, uh, have been yeah, in, been in uh, Metro, Metro Manila. Manila. Yeah. Um, what, it's like, what is it like to be the president of one of the largest metro areas? It must be a lot of work, very, all these things going on. What's it like to be president? Well, we have the biggest number of uh, pastors in all different, in comparison with other missions and other conferences. How many pastors uh, do you we have? We have been? 150. 150 pastors. 150 pastors. Uh, aside from that, we have our church planters. Church planters. Yeah, church planters, about um, 50. Are they also hired by the no, conference? They are not hired, but uh, you know, we are just giving them a stipend. A stipend. The end. And but how they many? Are under our direct uh, They're under. So you have 150 yeah. pastors, 15 church planters. Yeah. 
Are they in the metro area as well as outside the metro yeah, area? Yeah, there are also some in the provinces. Mm. Yeah. And how many churches or companies you have in Manila? Uh, we have more than 500 now, churches. 500? Yeah, yeah, more than 500. 500, um, to be specific, that's 506. That's, that's amazing. You know, I come from Los yeah. Angeles, and we have about 150 pastors. Uh -huh. But we have about the same number of churches. Uh -huh. We don't have that 500. That, that's amazing. So you have uh -huh. about three times as many churches yeah. as you do pastors. Yeah. Are, are most of the pastors have districts in Manila? Uh, yeah. What, two or three churches yeah, is about, common? Yeah, the average is three. Average three, is three. Three to five. Three to five. And are they fairly close together, yeah, I would yeah. imagine? Uh, just close. Mm. Just close. So we, um, how many members do you have in Metro Man Manila? Uh, I don't have a specific uh, in uh, Metro Manila, but... I mean, uh, your, your conference, uh, yeah. All throughout the conference... As per uh, our record, we have 167,000. 167,000? Yes. yes. So you're, you're bigger than some unions in the world field, right? Yeah. Just uh, your conference. Yeah, some, some, some of our leaders uh, told me that we are the biggest conference. You're, uh, you're the biggest conference as far as members are concerned. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I know just as I was leaving, you have formed another, uh, what do you call it, up, up here in um, Cavite. Yeah. Is this, what's, what's, what's this called? Yeah, the, we call this uh, Kabiti Satellite Office because uh, we are preparing them to become mission. A you know, mission. The Central Zone is uh, composed of 11 areas. 11 and areas. And this Kabiti is one of the biggest area of Central Zone. And we are preparing it to become mission, hopefully by next year. And then they become a mission, and then hopefully they'll eventually become a conference. Yeah, be, be self-sufficient. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, your daughter areas are growing up. Yeah, yeah, actually, when I came to the Central Zone as president, I give the challenge that uh, all our churches will uh, bear another uh, church. And all our district will have another uh, district and area, another area, and conference, another conference. And we are closing to that uh, direction. Now, I think you have, at least when I was here, you have workers' meetings once a month, right? Yes. Is that still, uh, yeah, you have workers' every, meetings? That's uh, every month. And then what do you do at those workers' meetings? Because I think that's a very excellent, I mean, uh -huh. obviously you have all these workers, all these churches, um, and they come to the conference office uh, once a month. What do you do at, at those workers' yeah, meetings? Yeah, we have our, uh, we have our um, professional growth. Uh, we invite uh, everyone, we invite uh, guests to share to us uh, on, what, uh, on different uh, aspects of the ministry. Excellent. Yeah. And what, what else do you do? Some of the departmental people will say, uh, this is a new book, or here's something from the press we would like you to promote in the churches. Yeah. Because so, I notice the pastors carrying away sometimes boxes and things they need for their local churches. Yeah, that's, uh, every month that's our fellowship time. Uh, we maximize those uh, time. Uh, that's also the time for the, to promote all our uh, different uh, directors, uh, depart different uh, departments, uh, activities, and programs. Yeah. And at the same time, if we have some, uh, you know, as you mentioned, we have some books, then they sure. will bring Thing it, it up. Uh, yeah. And the pastors like to see each other. Yeah, that's true. You know, when I was at a Southern California conference, they, uh, they, uh, they uh, used to give us pastors breaks. Yeah. And then they couldn't get us back uh -huh. because we all love talking to each other. Uh -huh. Then they took away the breaks. <laughs> but fortunately, so what, actually what we're doing now is uh, every month we have our uh, workers fellowship. Yes. But uh, one day for them is not, not, in, it's not right. enough. So mm -hmm. we make it two. Oh, one, you make it two one, days. Yeah, two days. Uh, one day is for their socialization. Oh, good. They have some, uh, you Excellent. know, they, they want to have a uh, basketball. Absolutely. Uh, so we give it to them since they are doing great anyway. So um, you, it's a two-day work worker meeting? Yeah. So they have one day for social. Uh, yeah. Uh, being with one and another, one day talking. for uh, talking about the work. I, I think that's excellent. Yeah, because the pastors so need a little. They are break. really excited going to the office every month. They're excited because, yeah, because it's not this, all work, work, work. This is a fellowship work. time. Excellent <laughs> time. I think that's an excellent yeah. because they're very busy. Yeah, that's right. they're very busy as pastors. What are some of the major challenges? I know. Look, you're in one of the biggest cities in the world. I think yeah. in one of the top ten cities. It's a city that doesn't that has a lot of poverty. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of people. Yeah. It's a very dynamic city, obviously. Yeah. It's the capital of the country. Yeah. Um, what are some of the major challenges the conference is facing? Well, um, first, in our own people, we have some challenges, like their mindset. You know, mm. uh, When we talk about urban mission, uh, special ministry to reach the affluent, you know, um, 
looking at the growing people now, the younger people, mm. you know, uh, one of the biggest issue maybe is the, the, the use of the drum in their worship. Uh. And many of our um, members, church members are uh. conservative. Uh. So that's uh, the, the big challenge mm. on how to get their support uh, to reach those uh, people in the, uh, up, those affluent people. Or, you know, or the younger people. Yeah. Yeah. So, big challenge yeah. for our own members to accept this, uh, this approach. And of course, um, uh, but of course, you know, there are some members of the church who are open-minded to, to, to go with us. Support yeah, a little to support bit. this. You know, it takes a lot of support, not just financial support, but their very own presence. Yeah, the support. I remember Mark Finley taught me a really excellent lesson on contextualization, yeah. that when a fisher that when a fisherman goes fishing, he doesn't put yeah. what he likes to eat on the yeah, hook. Yeah, that's true. And I think uh, we as Adventists have to say, in order to attract the public, we might have to put something on the hook yeah. that maybe we're not so attracted yeah. to. So long as we are not compromising the, Absolutely. the, the doctrines, the, the, central but doctrines the, the approach, of, we have to use different uh, style. Absolutely. And so that's one of the biggest challenges, our own people. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I wrote an article one time on internal and external barriers yeah. in the book of Acts. Yeah. And it's oftentimes the internal barriers of the church is often harder to overcome mm -hmm. than that's the external true. barriers of secularism yeah. or Catholicism yeah, or, or, or what it is. And the hard thing here is the, uh, some of our leaders, not just ordinary members. Leaders. Uh, who oppose the, the, the approach of the, uh, reaching out those people. So you're the president. You get texts <laughs> or m emails or phone calls yeah. saying, what why, is happening? Yeah, and why are you allowing this? <laughs> oh, so what do, what, what do you do? Yeah. What, so, do, you, what do you do? Well, I just uh, explained to them that, you know, we have to reach those people. Wonder, so it, yeah. it's, it's mission. Yeah, it's all so about you, mission. To put the mission first. We are doing this not because just to satisfy... <laughs> Uh, their needs, but you know, we have to win them. Uh, the important thing is that we'll have an opportunity to let them know the truth. Wonderful. So, yeah, but if we immediately apply our style, then they will not come. Mm. So how can we win them mm. and bring to them the truth? Mm. So I told them, let's give them an opportunity to hear, to hear first. Wonderful. Then the truth. So, you, in a way, um, have to have a balance between making sure that pastors are orthodox in their doctrine, yeah. but give them a little freedom. And on the other hand, you have to protect them a little bit that's true. from people who might have some misgivings. Yeah, that's true. And I think it's a blessing that you meet with the pastors uh, once a week, I mean, once a month. Yeah. You can confer with them. You can see yeah. how they're doing. So you're keeping in contact. Yeah, we, we, I told them we have to be balanced. Uh, I respect the conservative, but uh, for the sake of the ministry, for, for the, the sake, sake of the, of the work, ministry. and yeah. for the salvation of those people, mm. we have to uh, go to them, mm. and maybe in different style than uh, what we are doing in a traditional way. Yeah, I, I might say I remember driving down from Baguio with you about two or three years ago, and mm. right before the conference was to make its selection, and apparently um, you told me the pastors wanted you to be their, their uh, president. Which, mm -hmm. which I thought was very, very um, <laughs> blessing coming from, from the past to say, Pastor Ben, we, we want you to be our president. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's a real blessing and a support of uh, your viewpoint as far as Well, actually, by function. the time I was in, in the union, but, uh, you know, as you mentioned, some of our, some of our pastors are coming to me yeah. uh, asking my support yeah. if I could be the president of Central Sun. Well, I told them, if it is the will of the Lord, then yeah. so be it. So. Yeah, one thing I've always appreciated about you, Ben, just to let other administrators and pastors know, is that I've never felt you've been political. You've always said, if the Lord wants me there, the Lord wants me there. Well, and I, I don't have to uh, politicize about it or yeah. call people or try to get somewhere. And I, I think you're in integrity as spoken volumes, and people have a lot of confidence in your leadership. Well, I, I always remind myself that uh, life is not all about me. Uh, ministry is not about me. It's mm. all about God. Amen. So my, my work is to know the will of the Lord. Amen. And to submit so, to all this plan. So one of the challenges here is the immigrant population. Yeah. You don't have so many I immigrants outside the country, but where are the immigrants coming from within the country to Manila every day? Yeah. Um, we have a growing uh, immigrants in Manila. And of course, that's a big challenge for us. Actually, opportunities. 
opportunities. Uh, but and, and, and we're just talking before the interview. You know, people, uh, you know, Kubao was kind of the, uh, the, the, the terminal for the buses yeah. coming from the south. And how many would, would you estimate every day come into Manila from, from the south? trying to resettle in Maybe from, from the north and from the south. Yeah. Uh, I could say about um, 30,000 a day. 20, 30,000 a day. 30,000, yeah, a day. That's amazing. So you mentioned about in Cabo, we have, uh, there's a terminal there right. from the north. Right. And it's good that uh, we have already a, a group of company there, company of believers. Oh, there's a company. Yeah, um, that uh, we're trying to, so that we could reach those people. Ah. and be of uh, help to them. Yeah, they, yeah. yeah, so I think that's one thing that's added, I mentioned earlier, to the density of Manila. It's very crowded. Yeah, that's true. Um, people, you go back into back streets and it's extremely crowded. Yeah. People are jammed together. And as they say in, here in the Philippines, there's always one, there's always room for one more in the jeepney. Yeah. So we'll put a few more people <laughs> in the house and, and they're able to be there. What are some of the challenges with the Im immigrants? Because they come here with basically nothing, right? Yeah, uh, of course, um, we have different group of people in, the, in our uh, areas. There are poor, there are uh, well-to-do people, and uh, we have uh, different ministries to them. Mm. Uh, as I said, we have uh, mixed people in, the, in our uh, meeting place, in our venue. Uh, very big challenge because uh, considering there are poor, their needs are different from, from the affluent people. Mm -hmm. The poor people need some, you know, livelihood. Uh, livelihood. So we offer some trainings, livelihood trainings. And for the uh, rich people, we offer some connections, refer them to some uh, people who we know could be of help to them. Uh, so, well, let's talk a little bit about the rich people, you know, because yeah. the Philippines is an all poor, obviously. Yeah. And there's some uh, wealthy places in yeah. Metro Manila. There's Forbes and there's uh, yeah. uh, Makati, yeah. Alabang, uh, uh, other places. Um, Ad Adventism in the city has traditionally done better among the poor people mm -hmm. than among the more well-to-do well people. What are we doing in Metro Manila to reach the upper class people? Well, um, we have different um, um, ministry that uh, could reach them, like um, we, we have the photography uh, group, club, something like that. Uh -huh. uh, cyclist people, uh, if their interest is about cycling, then we offer some, uh, we're, we are organizing a group. So that, that's one way of reaching them. Is, are most of the churches among the upper class, are they in traditional church buildings or they tend to be in like non-traditional places where uh, they meet for a, for a worship, for instance? Usually, they, they, they meet on a, some, like, condominium. A condominium? Yeah, condominium. Like on a uh, high-rise or something? Yeah, yeah. And they have, let's say, an, an apartment there or, or, or large space? Yeah, that's true. And uh, we are renting those spaces. Oh, your yeah, the conference are, is yeah. renting those spaces? Yeah. And, so and that's one of the uh, challenges for us because uh, in Metro Manila, it's very expensive, very costly. But uh, we have no way but to, to do it. Now, we do have some Adventists, I know I've met them, doctors, etc., uh -huh. that are doing very well in Metro Manila. Yeah. And I'm sure that they're also being um, um, helping in reaching out the people that they are working with through mm. their net networking. Uh -huh. So you help people net network, you said earlier, with uh, the uh, wealthy people. Yeah, uh, we also have some um, converts, uh, like medical doctors, uh, engineers, lawyers, uh, it's good that the Lord is blessing our efforts uh, to win them. Mm. And of course, uh, that's one of the challenges. Uh, we need more uh, uh, affluent people in our, uh, our members, um, those who are uh, in a good uh, high, high uh, income status. Income status. Uh, they, we need them because uh, they're the one who can reach also those uh, affluent people. Yeah, plus they can help out with yeah. the other ministries within so the church. It's, be, it's very easy. For example, uh, we, have, uh, we have a medical doctor, and when he's in, in our group, uh, it's very easy for him to reach those... Uh, his, uh, his fellow yeah. medical people. Yeah, that's true. Excellent. Are there any initiatives? I, I, I know um, the, um, the conferences here 
are um, ministry driven, like we have certain yeah. initiatives, Metro Manila. Are there anything that the conference has either they're doing now or are planning to do in the near future that are directed at ministry in Metro Manila? Knowing uh, one of the challenges of um, special ministry in Metro Manila. It's called uh, special ministry. It's, we call that special ministry. Is that ministry. with the poor and the yeah, upper because class? It's not in the church. I see. Uh, we are trying to reach uh, those people. Who in don't the come known to people like Makati, Global City. Mm. Uh, you mentioned about Cubao. Yeah. Uh, those are not churches, but uh, we acquire properties. J just recently, uh, mm. we bought uh, a condo unit in Shangri-La. Very expensive. Shangri-La? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a five-star hotel. One, yeah. one unit. Oh, really? In yeah. Shangri-La? Yeah. By, um, that means we are really serious in reaching those people. You're in the Shangri-La Hotel? Yes. That's by, uh, what, Megamall, what's it called? Yeah, that's... Uh, by uh, Etza there? Yeah. That, uh, that's that is a uh, center. Uh, yeah. Some, uh, yeah. So you bought some... One unit. One unit? One unit. That cost us about 11 million. Very and expensive, but we know uh, we have to reach people around that area. That's amazing. That's our direction right now. Wow. Yeah. And so that's we'll a big investment. Very big investment, and uh, we'll try to see uh, what we can do the next uh, two or three years to get some more mm. so that we could reach, um, uh, you know, well-to-do people in those yeah. areas. You know, it's very interesting. Um, John Harvey mm -hmm. Kellogg, he went into Chicago and he was working only for the poor classes. Mm -hmm. And Ellen White said, look, you should reach the upper classes. That's right. Because when you reach the upper classes, you reach all the classes. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it trickles down. That's true. That's so true. that's a fantastic investment. Yeah. Do you have any rallying cry? I, I know usually there's a motto or, or, or a program that kind of crystallizes everyone's effort towards soul winning. Do you, do you, have, do you have any of those going on within the conference? Currently. Well, uh, we offer different uh, services to help the people, like, uh, as I mentioned, uh, give some livelihood trainings, um, offer some, uh, some programs that will be of help to okay. our people. Very uh, good. We are offering different programs. Very good. Yeah. Now, how many people you have working in the conference office there? In the conference right now? In our... Uh, yes. In the, in the office or yeah. in the field? In, 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 in the conference office. In the conference office, we have about uh, 40 people. Yeah, 40. And those are departmental directors and uh, yeah. helpers within And the... some staff. Yeah. yeah. I know they work very, very hard. Yeah. I, I, I'm very uh, favored because I have uh, the support of all our directors and uh, our staff. Very, all and they of work them very, are very, very supportive. Hard yeah. To help the pastors. Yeah, that's true. And uh, very supportive in giving. As I give the direction of our conference, they're very supportive. Like, uh, you know, uh, when I came to the office uh, uh, last year of January, uh, we have 29 municipalities unentered, still unentered. Really? In Metro yeah. Manila? No, not in, in Metro. In, yeah, we have, uh, we have two cities in Metro Manila, but uh, most of them are uh, in the surrounding provinces. We still have some towns who have not been reached. But praise the Lord, uh, just last month it was declared we have already... A uh, group of uh, company believers in those areas. Oh, really? So we could declare that uh, there is no more town in Central Zone which is still unentered. All our municipalities now are already entered. Yeah, I th those 29 I, uh, sites, unentered uh, sites. Yeah, I, I tell pastors just getting a map of the city and putting where the churches are will tell yeah. you a lot. Yeah. And obviously, you saw that there were these 29 areas that mm -hmm. weren't entered. Yeah. And so, so within the last couple years you were able to, to move yeah. and help people ha to establish Having, uh, having uh, 29 um, uh, church planters assigned in those areas uh, really uh, did a lot. Um, are, are there two or three things we can pray for specifically for Metro Manila? Maybe you'd like to address your constituents about what we can all pray for for the great needs in, in that great city. Uh, maybe my... My appeal to our uh, constituents is to have an open mind for the urban mission. Mm. We have to reach the upper class of our society. And we also have some, you know, well-to-do people in our church. We need them. We need them. Their, their, their presence will do a difference, will make a difference as they join in, the, in those uh, specialized ministries of reaching the affluent. Amen. So I encourage uh, some of our um, professionals 
and those who are uh, in good uh, uh, social status to join us in this uh, program of reaching the, the people, more people in the urban areas. Especially the special ministry area. Yes. Yeah. And of course, we also need to pray for some of our church planters and our uh, people assigned to that area because it's a big challenge for them. They, you know, they living, basically go in with yeah, nothing. Living in those areas, we cannot compare them to the provinces. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, if they will invite people to eat, they cannot just eat somewhere. Because if they try to reach those uh, affluent people, they have to eat also in... Uh, once in a while, they have to go to Starbucks. Uh -huh. But you know, it's very expensive there. So I know. maybe uh, we could pray. We, we have to pray for our um, people working in, there, in, that area, in those areas. That they'll be given resources yeah, yeah. to properly meet, meet the people. Yes, of course. In, in the way they dress, you know, we have to support them. Yeah. So it's a big challenge. Mm. We'll do our part in the conference, but uh, we have to pray for uh, our um, own people. They need some, some more trainings in reaching uh, the affluent. So uh, let's pray that they will be more effective. Amen. And that the Lord will use them mightily. Mm. Well, you know, Ellen White in Ministry of Healing, one of her major books, there's a whole chapter on ministry to the rich. And I think that's an often overlooked chapter, which she gives excellent um, principles to for the church members what 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 they can do to reach their rich friends yeah so uh, we have to do something good to them we have to come to people and that's what we're doing in the conference uh, reach the people where they are and amen. try to do something to minister to their needs amen. and and to win their hearts you know amen as jesus did so we have to do thank you so much ben well, the end of our program has come, and I want to encourage you to visit our Facebook page called There's a New Day Coming. It has additional information, such as where to get the print and digital copy of the book called There's a New Day Coming, and valuable links and resources about urban ministry. And remember that this program is based on Jonah 4.11, where God asked the reluctant prophet during his ministry to the lost souls of Nineveh, should I not be concerned about that great city? May the Lord of the harvest send out many laborers into the great cities to prepare a people for the new day that is coming soon. May the Lord help us as we do this.